Okay, do you guys mind if I record? Because Gino cannot be here today. He's in a, he's yeah, in a plane to Lo Los Angeles. Sure. So I will share with him the recording. Um, I, I'm not sure yeah, how many people are joining, but. So yeah. Daniel, which, uh, which topics do you have in mind? You have a few, I guess. Yeah, I have a few, so. I finished just my education as a life coach, but I had multiple spiritual awakenings. So maybe that's interesting for the people. I mean, I could, generally speaking, talk about a lot of topics. Um, I went through all the stages. Right now I'm into grounding myself and just having fun and doing some business stuff and also some higher consciousness community building with fine bottles. Mm -hmm. uh, Divine Portals is one of my Discord servers where we try to build one of uh, the biggest environments about higher consciousness, education, and free learning. And yeah, I'm big into shamanism because that's my ancestral line, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, my ancestors have been, I tracked them way back to the Frill Nation. And I discovered that I have Carl Gustav Jung maybe in my lineage and also Nikola Tesla. <laughs> because I am very into frequencies, vibrations, technology, and I'm also a, a life coach and I love the teachings of Carl Gustav Jung and also Stan Groff with the holotropic breathwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I myself work a lot with uh, frequencies. Uh, I've been... Uh, discovering cymatics and uh, using cymatics as you may know what it is right no never heard of that uh, well i started cymatics like uh, about 12 years ago by vibrating on a small quartz surface uh, some um, let's say dust particles with ultrasounds and uh, with oh. ultrasounds and the dust particles i could create some very uh, simple um geometries uh, and then later on i went on to uh infrasounds so very low frequencies vibrating into water and uh, revealing some sacred geometries inside the water by light reflections and frequencies uh, special frequencies and uh, i use this amazing i use this medium in my arts um, to kind of uh, trigger this reconnection between human and nature. Um, so, yeah, I'm very sensitive to what you, uh, you, you have gone in your uh, discovery journey of um, your ancestors and yourself moving towards the future. Yeah, now I'm in the here and now. I don't uh, dig into the rabbit hole of my ancestors anymore because it's very deep and it goes very... I also have memories of past lives and things like that. So yeah, it's very crazy. And uh, my mother is not online yet. I told her, I just gave her a phone call. Um, I guess she will get online soon. Uh, but you just said something about education, free, free education, a uh, free format of education for children. And uh, this is yeah. uh, something- No, no, no. Uh, it's, it's, it's not ch uh, for ch children, it's for- young adults uh, that are going through spiritual awakenings that are awakened already to connect with uh, like-minded people all around the world. It's like the Metatron server from uh, Chino. Um, yeah, I know about it. Combined with the Antarabath uh, project. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. We, um, we also have a, a community we call Recharge in Shanghai that has the same uh, sort of late motives. And, um, but I wanted to speak about one of my many projects of my mother is um, uh, to do those, um, those sort of uh, camps in, the, in Normandy as well um, for children, uh, maybe between five to seven, eight years old, uh, because I think around five years old uh, and even younger, uh, most of the, a lot of children are still in this awakened state. And, um, that you are talking about for adults, but uh, you actually have this state of mind of consciousness at um, a child 
age uh, before education uh, system education comes ruin everything <laughs> so the um, i love the, working with children <laughs> yes yeah, so the that's one of many of the different intentions we have with the the project in normandy but it has been on hold for like the past two years and uh, we are just um, looking for the right way to get it started and uh, the right um, community efforts, I guess. But it's very important to start here yeah, from childhood, I guess, uh, to, um, yeah. to nourish, to nourish uh, the, what's already there. Yeah. Yeah, I want to hold the space for, for children, actually, the way it should be like there's this awesome woman she's the co-founder of uh, divine portals she has five children and she raises them completely free so that's amazing i learned so much about raising children i mean we don't have to raise children actually i don't like even the word raising yeah, um, yeah. it's yeah. like uh, being there holding space for for the kids actually because yeah they the kids of the new earth they they have all the power keep it safe but not too safe either <laughs> yeah of course and and moses uh, may i ask if you plan to go to the um, uh, talk to trees uh, i forgot the name of the festival in paris um trees um uh if trees could talk yeah if Trees could talk. I, I love this. I actually uh, myself make music with uh, real plants by uh, putting sensors in the soil of the plants. And um, then we can hear electronic music played by the plants. So if trees could talk, uh, kind of resonates to me. <laughs> and so most it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> I, I saw that in, the, in Italy at the community. How is the name? Yeah. There's a big uh, conscious community in Italy. Uh, I saw a video of the, this device, how they make music like you talks right now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Moses, would, would you be taking part to any workshop or talks in um, If Trees Can Talk? I intend to. I'm still talking with Gino about it to go into the details, but I intend to, yes. May I know what uh, topics uh, in if you maybe didn't choose one yet, but what topics you would have in mind? Sure. Um, so the school I come from is based on Kabbalah. And there is this um, concept, and again, I'm, I'm using words that come from this school and, and they can be, it could be said in other words from any other, uh, discipline um the idea is that the human can either be the me the me in fear the survival the me versus you or we can tap into the conscious i the aware flow loving i and once we tap into essence who i am uh there's a process of how to manifest manifest out of the eye rather than how many people in society uh, operate very much out of the me out of the fear and so um, i'm happy to share this process yeah that's beautiful it's uh it somewhat appeals to tapping into intuition sure sure also intuition also intuition but it's a it's a holistic experience including intuition um but we don't exclude the mind the heart every you know all the other chakras if you want to call so so uh it's a holistic experience yeah yeah um would you say um i have this random question <laughs> uh would you how would you describe in a, a couple words uh what is consciousness i mean myself i i'm very um i i haven't um worked on my lexical necessarily but i would say there is this um, cosmic energy filtered through the earth environment that is always in our surrounding and it's like tapping into cosmic energy and um yeah it's like a outside of the body 
this cosmic language that's a sort of, a, yeah, I don't know. How, how would you describe in a couple of words consciousness? Well, I think humans have been having fun with this for quite a while. Um, I think it's essential before we put words to it. You know, we tend to put words to something we don't have words for. Yeah, that's so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to put some words, but none of these words will resonate with everyone. They might resonate with some experience. Um, yeah, but not everything has to be described and not everything has to be boxed and not everything has to be defined, especially when it's not defined. So it's if it's not defined and it's not, it's infinite, why, why do we even try to define it? But, but the human mind still has fun doing this. So, um, yeah, we would have to go back and forth with some words. Like as soon as you say tapping into, which is correct, you're tapping into something. But when you're saying you're tapping into something, you right away position yourself as outside of it. Mm. And we're not outside of it. We are, we are it. Surrounded and inside and we are it. So we got to go some back and forth with some of these limiting words. And so perhaps the part with which some are experiencing now is not so much the consciousness, but more the awareness of consciousness, mm -hmm. which means we're all in it. Just some might be less aware simply or any one of us at any moments might be less aware because of our fears, because of our survival mode. So often when we are in reaction to what's happening, we might be less aware of consciousness. We're mm -hmm. still in it. We're still it. It's just a question maybe some when people start speaking about being conscious, what they might be speaking about is being aware of consciousness. Mm -hmm. so it's a mental awareness. But this is a beginning of, a, of an endless conversation, it which is. I look forward to. <laughs> it's great. Thank you so much. And uh, Le Leila, um, are you also planning to go to the um, conference in Paris? So, uh, we cannot hear you. Sorry, I muted myself to not to interfere with uh, other conversations. So, um, uh, yes, I suggested to Gino that I could be of limited help for the time being because of the COVID. Um, my health is very fragile, especially my lungs. So I'll see what I can do, but I am very keen to come out of this confinement as everyone. Mm -hmm. um, my work is... Um, around my master's degree was built on a retreat that combines the Cohen's paradoxical questions such as I am, the concept of the self with meditation and a structured process for five days. So maybe I can take it to some uh, centers including Anne's and yours maybe mm -hmm. in the future. Um, I'm a psychologist, uh, and uh, consciousness is a very big part of my work. I have been with a group, uh, the Scientific and Medical Network, that talks about a consciousness. I've been with them for the last 23, 24 years. Um, my research is on meditation, the unconscious process of meditation. And uh, I taught courses in UCD on consciousness and child development, just, just to link back to your conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very keen on contributing to introducing meditation to children. Mm -hmm. um, I sent um, a process, a gradual process, to, um, all the way from early age to the age of 18, to someone who is in um, 
in touch with uh, schools in Scotland and he has an impact on them. I don't know where that is. But mainly I would like to focus on running Zoom retreats. It shortened my, my process and work within the limitations and the parameters of, of my home and traveling in the future. Mm -hmm. So you, you imagine that the people taking part to the retreats uh, would be in the same place? Um, I mean, not as you, but uh, or they would be each in a different place? Yes, uh, that was the original idea when I, I, I was facing the confinements of COVID and still am, but I'm very encouraged when I see that uh, you are starting to, um, to organize beautiful things and very much tempted to come to your farm in Normandie. I live in France. I am in Besançon oh, on yeah. the... Yes, on the eastern um, borders next to Switzerland. So it's just a train away. Yeah. And um, as you can imagine, a farm is quite away from any neighbor. So um, it's like 20 hectares and uh, yeah, you, you don't see anyone. You can be a kind of in immersion, uh, immersive experience uh, with, uh, with nature and uh, the facilities of the, the different spaces that uh, we have uh, built over there. And um, of course, it's a it's a work in progress, uh, but it's it's gone very far from the beginning where it was. So it's quite uh, encouraging. It looks lovely. Uh, thank you so much for sharing the photos. Um, actually, a few days ago, I was really sending it out out there to to come across um, settings like yours, and it just came back in the most delightful way. <laughs> so um, I'm grateful. Um, and consciousness is a very big part of my work and my quest since the age, early age. But I had a peak experience at the age of 13, which um, linked me to divine love. And I think it is shaping itself in its conclusion now through those retreats. So happy to help, happy to be part of this group. Yeah, that's fantastic. And um, another of the um, holding for the foundations of the project in Normandy is uh, to have a holistic approach and to bring together experts in their own domains uh, to be able to uh, create bridges between uh, the, um, the different specialties, let's call them like that. Uh, would it be um, science, art, uh, literature, uh, or, or healing? Or, and, um, and then, uh, because everyone in their own domain has some uh, questions which are, or which might even never get truly resolved, but uh, it's always uh, more, um, uh, pro uh, not productive, but, uh, there, there might be more interesting results by um, converging the different um, uh, specialties uh, throughout common questions. And um, so to have a holistic approach and uh, to, um, to always be striving to find um, answers without um, really, um, it's not about the answer, it's, it's always about the journey that leads to uh, to an answer, potential answer, which actually might never be one or another, but it's the process Absolutely. that's really important. And uh, converging the specialties uh, through the expertise of um, each, um, each leader of his own expertise is very, uh, very key, I think, um, to our global community. Absolutely, I agree with you. My process is very flexible. It can run on its own for a few days or a shorter period of time, but it can allow itself to, uh, to be built within another process or integrate some kind of music frequency uh, during various types of meditation. So it's, um, it's very flexible. It can work with a process of someone or hold itself on its own. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's very important. Uh, this um, to have a, a, um, a fixed structure, let's say, but within that structure, uh, a large flexibility. Uh, that's the way also I, I, I kind of uh, prepare my uh, performances, let's say my, my audio visual concerts. Uh, they have a somewhat of a structure, but inside that structure is a large flexibility. Well, Anne, Anne has arrived. Hello. If she can hear How us. Are you? I'm Hello, so Anne. sorry to be late. I'm Hen. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Lovely to I meet just you. have to add, I, I have to hop out of the call in five minutes because I need to go to a, okay. a lunch yeah. meeting. So sorry for that. But we, I'm in the group. You can hook me up anytime. So uh, just to introduce before Luca is leaving, um, and is, um, Luca is probably coming to Paris uh, in July. And um, maybe Luca, uh, he... He has a lot of interesting uh, stories about, um, not stories, experiences to share um, to the event in Paris, but also maybe um, Luca is uh, very uh, connected, uh, let's say, to various communities uh, in Europe or even beyond Europe. And uh, there might be a, a way to interconnect uh, our um, um, course. Is that right, Lucas? Sorry, I, I introduced very brief. Uh, Daniel, Daniel. Yes. Daniel. Daniel, my name is Daniel, sorry. Yeah, uh, I know it's Daniel. The, the name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Daniel. Yeah, so I can share very quickly. Uh, my, my spiritual journey started when I was 22 years old. Um, I was hospitalized from my parents because I got visions and um, I spent... Uh, a great amount of time in in the psychiatry i think three months i had my second spiritual awakening in 2020 and the third one was this year in february so in february i've been in psychiatry for another two days but then i left for myself because i had this trust into myself that i can handle this myself and with the guidance of and the patience of my parents I'm very grateful for them that they allowed me to process all the things that came to me. And yes, I just finished my life coach education. I'm a tech entrepreneur. Uh, we work with Airbnb right now uh, to in the field of digital guest registration and automating finances. And I also have my own consciousness community that is called Divine Portals. It's a Discord uh, community, and yeah, we try to to spread love, peace, and uh, full expression of our truest self. That's great. And um, yeah, I think uh, Anne, you heard? Tu as entendu? Uh, J'ai entendu. Pas tout, mais uh, j'ai entendu. Yeah, th this is great. Um, and uh, I'm really much looking forward to, uh, to have the chance to meet you, Daniel. Uh, not sure I can come uh, soon to Europe, but um, anywhere, anytime. Actually, we, we already meet each other. It's done. <laughs> it's, a yeah, start. It's... it's the beginning. Very happy. Where, where, where is live? Where is live? Autriche. I. Ah, it's not far from here. Where are you? In Normandy. Normandy. Yeah, that, that's France, right? Yeah. 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 I, I get my car in July and then I'm very flexible with traveling. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's easy. <laughs> And uh, so also Moses uh, came here today, as well as Leila that you saw earlier. And um, okay, are... I need to hop out. It was nice okay. to meet you all. Bye, Daniel. We hear you. Bye. Bye. And um, so as I explained to you uh, earlier on the phone, uh, Maman, 
um, everyone here now we we have Moses and Leila are into consciousness uh, works and um, research and um, uh, Leila has been into consciousness uh, since um, always and uh, and Moses is um, doing some uh, very deep works and will present some uh, lectures and um, workshops um, at the event in Paris um, and possibly um, give a visit uh, for this um, uh, as Gino with Gino uh, to Normandy after the event um, and uh, Leila was um, is also doing some works for children and consciousness and meditation and um, some very I, I, I describe it badly but um, um, things um, because maybe mom uh, you want to introduce uh, some uh, of your vision and things you want to share to children here in Normandy maman Oui, j'ai pas compris. Est-ce que tu veux expliquer un petit peu ce que tu aimerais euh, développer pour les enfants en Normandie? Ah. Et Laurent, euh... sauf si tu as besoin de ça pour, euh, ah, pour Gino. Parler. Nous, on peut passer en français. D'accord. Euh, je pense qu'elle est là, habite en France. Euh, je oui, pense oui. qu'elle peut comprendre. Ah, on je peut suis... parler français. Oui, bien, bien sûr. Absolument. Formidable. <rire> Merci, euh, cher ami. <rire> Je, je le parle pas très bien, mais je le comprends bien. Alors c'est pas. <rire> Merci moi. Je vois que votre votre introduction c'est facilitateur uni one. Et qu'est-ce que vous entendez par facilitateur Mais on va revenir à Léla peut-être. Euh, euh, J'ai commencé mon travail comme psychologue. Euh, J'ai fait des recherches à la fac euh, sur un, un retraite en, en, en Angleterre avec Dr. John Crook. Euh, C'est un processus qui permet à la personne de, euh, de passer cinq jours avec les autres euh, et choisir une question. Euh, qui paraît euh, urgente pour la personne à ce moment-là. Euh, J'ai aussi euh, enseigné à la fac euh, le, le topic consciousness, euh, altered states of consciousness, tout ce qui est en dehors de ce qu'on appelle normal. <rire> euh, J'ai enseigné aussi à la fac le développement des enfants. Et j'aimerais bien voir que les écoles commencent à introduire la méditation pour les enfants dès le jeune âge. Oui. Euh, donc, j'ai écrit un petit, euh, euh, un petit papier. Oui, je l'ai envoyé à quelqu'un qui s'occupe des écoles en, en, en Écosse. Il habite la France. Euh, il s'appelle euh, David Lorimer. Euh, c'est un grand savant euh, et euh, c'est une personne qui est très active, euh, très, très active euh, concernant les enfants et autres, consciousness surtout. Et, et voilà. Euh, J'aimerais bien venir vous voir, Anne. Ça fait un moment que nous sommes, nous, euh, nous échangeons quelques petites idées. C'est euh, à travers Gino. Euh, si je peux venir cette année, ça sera avec grand plaisir. Sinon, je viendrai peut-être dans l'avenir pour avoir ma traite de cinq jours chez vous. On peut en parler aussi. Mais j'aimerais bien aider, si je peux aider dès ma résidence, à partir de ma résidence ici et vous avant avez... les choses, ça sera avec grand plaisir aussi. Mais c'est avec, avec joie, mais j'avoue que c'est euh, une démarche que j'ai depuis euh, mon plus jeune âge, depuis euh, mon adolescence, on va dire. Je suis psychologue comme vous de formation, mais je n'ai jamais voulu en faire un métier. Euh, et j'ai considéré que dans la vie, ce qu'il y a de plus important, c'est de savoir, c'est un 
ce n'est pas prétentieux du tout, bien au contraire, c'est d'essayer de comprendre ce que les autres ont dans la tête, euh, voilà, pour l'image, parce qu'on euh, peut avoir l'impression de comprendre un langage, mais il n'y a pas seulement le langage des mots, il y a le langage de l'esprit, et l'esprit est bien plus fort que celui des mots, parce que les, faux, les mots sélectionnent ce que l'esprit veut expliquer, ou voudrait comprendre. Alors, ça, c'est une de mes grandes passions depuis mon plus jeune âge, et c'est ce euh, celui qui m'a fait découvrir cette, euh, cette forme de pensée, qui n'est pas du tout une idéologie, loin de là, mais qui est une, une forme euh, idéaliste, enfin, pas idéaliste, humaniste plutôt. Je suis plutôt versée vers l'humanisme, vers l'humain, et ce qui, me, ce qui me touche profondément chez l'humain, c'est tout ce qu'il n'ose pas dire, tout ce qu'il n'ose pas faire. D'ailleurs, j'ai dit depuis le plus jeune âge à mon fils, mais vas-y, fais-le si tu as envie, ose. Et il faut oser exprimer ce que nous avons au plus profond de nous-mêmes. C'est-à-dire déjà notre pensée, elle est, elle est tellement enfouie souvent que d'ouvrir une petite porte et puis d'ouvrir une autre, c'est une difficulté immense. Or, il faut être très simple avec soi-même. Donc, ça fait partie de, de, de j'allais dire, de, de ce qui m'intéresse dans les valeurs humaines. Et l'enfant, bien évidemment, parce que c'est par là que commence toute la force, euh, euh, j'allais dire, de la, de la compréhension, de, de, de l'échange, du partage de, des uns et des, avec les autres. Et on voit depuis le plus jeune âge le comportement d'un enfant qui est déjà dans la partie innée de sa, de sa vie, mais de son environnement qui influence toute sa vie. Et c'est là où est le, non pas le danger, mais euh, j'allais dire, si on n'ouvre pas les champs de la compréhension, les champs de la connaissance, les champs de, de, de l'expression euh, corporelle, ex, d'expression vocale, euh, morale, etc., eh bien, on reste bloqué. Euh, peut-être jusqu'à la fin de ces jours. Donc, c'est cette ouverture que je veux transmettre, que je veux euh, communiquer. Et merci, Laurent, de, de, de m'entraîner sur le chemin de, de l'école, <rire> parce que c'est par l'école, l'enseignement, l'éducation et l'enseignement qu'on peut vraiment euh, euh, ben, se, se forger une personnalité, se forger un désir, une connaissance, et puis aller au-delà même de cette connaissance, en, en partageant avec toutes les rencontres que l'on peut faire dans, 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 dans la vie. Et celui qui, qui a été euh, pour moi l'enseignement le, 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 le plus important, c'est Rodolphe Steiner. Et mmh. euh, Rodolphe Steiner, que j'ai découvert donc à l'âge de 14 ans, je n'ai pas fini, fini de puiser en lui tout euh, toutes ces connaissances que ce soit dans le monde de l'architecture dans le monde de la littérature dans le monde de... il ne faut pas oublier que c'est lui qui en 1871 a inventé le mot écologie au moment de l'industrialisation euh, il avait ouvert euh, donc déjà le, 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 la porte de, du danger euh, de, de, de tout ce qui allait se passer et en un siècle il s'est passé en plus d'un siècle presque un siècle et demi, il s'est passé tant de choses euh, qui n'ont fait qu'accélérer, accélérer l'enfouiment le, le, même de l'humain, de, euh, de sa richesse, de ses forces, et on est en train de transformer l'humain, et ça, ça me désole terriblement. Euh, mais on y viendra peut-être sur d'autres sujets. Laurent, tu m'arrêtes si tu penses que… Alors, ici même… Pardon, vas-y, vas-y. Ici, ici même en Normandie, ce que je voulais dire, c'est que nous avons euh, choisi ce lieu en famille, euh, il y a de cela un peu plus de dix ans maintenant, euh, c'est pour y euh, réaliser un projet euh, culturel, mais humaniste. Et dans cette partie de ce, de ce lieu, il y a un endroit que j'ai destiné qui s'appelle la Maison Bleue, euh, donc la, la, la Maison de la Connaissance, euh, la couleur bleue étant celle de la, de la connaissance, de la quête de la lumière. 
Et, euh, et donc, dans cette maison, je souhaite euh, réel, pouvoir réaliser une école avec les, euh, avec les bases, de, j'allais dire, de cette extraordinaire philosophe et pédagogue qui était euh, Rudolf Steiner, mais bien évidemment en le remettant au goût du jour, en le euh, modernisant et en appliquant aujourd'hui, j'allais dire, des, euh, des réalités qui ne peuvent pas nous échapper. Mais en essayant d'aller beaucoup plus loin, et je reviens sur le point de la méditation, qui, moi je me souviens, enfant, je faisais ma prière tous les soirs, euh, jusqu'à même encore de nos jours, je, je, je prie. Mais prier, c'est déjà une, la médi, de la méditation. Donc, ce sont des choses que nous avons oubliées avec le temps. Euh, euh, et c'est une, une part de nous-mêmes qui est très, très importante, c'est d'aller apaiser notre, nos forces énergétiques, euh, spirituelles et physiques, pour retrouver un lendemain encore plus fort. Voilà. Enfin, on, peut un rappeler, petit peu on peut rappeler que tu ne, tu ne pries pas à un dieu en particulier. Non, d'ailleurs, euh, merci de le rappeler parce que j'ai reçu une éducation protestante et je remercie vraiment mes parents de m'avoir entraîné sur euh, le chemin de cette euh, éducation. J'appelle plus une éducation, certes, qui est, re, qui est re, reliée à, un, à une histoire à laquelle on lui a donné le nom de religion, euh, parce que c'est une forme, déjà, religieux n'est pas forcément ce que l'on appelle religieux aujourd'hui. C'est assez différent. Mais c'est surtout une forme, euh, j'allais dire, de spiritualité, de, de compréhension en tout cas, qu'il y a une, forme, une force suprême qui nous protège, qui nous protège, qui nous agite aussi pour nous, faire, nous pousser à réfléchir, nous pousser à, à, à comprendre, à, à émettre des, euh, des, des forces et des idées. Euh, voilà, oui, ça, ça c'est une réalité. Moïse, est-ce que cette force suprême fait partie de la conscience Est-ce que la conscience peut être appelée cette force suprême ben, Évidemment, puisque de, de tout temps… Je posais la question temps, à Moïse. Ah, ah vas-y, vas-y. 